Hey, this is George back with the New Hunter's Guide, and today we're talking turkey. Specifically, four strategies for beginners to start hunting spring turkey. Of course, these apply to everyone, not just beginners, but we're talking about them from a beginner's point of view. Even if you got 30 years of experience, most people are doing one of these four strategies. So number one, oh, before I jump into that, why don't you just let me know in the comments below, what is your favorite way to hunt turkey? If you've never hunted before, but what do you think is a good way to hunt turkey? Would love to hear your ideas before we move into and talk about the four points. So go ahead and do that. Number one is what I call the blind sit. Now this is the strategy that you would use, one, if you don't have time for scouting or you don't have a lot of land you can hunt on. Your opportunities are super limited. And even if you did have time for scouting, you've only got a couple acres and you're either gonna hunt there or nowhere. Or on the other hand, maybe you've got a few options, but you've got no time, so you just figure in your mind, hmm, where do I think I should go? Or based on what I knew from last year, and you just go, you plop down, and you sit and hope. Now, that sounds kind of uh, you know like it's not a great strategy, and of course, that's probably the least effective of all the strategies, but that can work. If you're in an area where you turkeys have been in the past, they were there last year in the spring or the year before that, or you've got some kind of regular sightings or something that you see crossing the road, anything, you can still have a fair amount of success with this. So basically what you're doing is you're trying to find the best spot you can in the area that you have. When I say best spot, usually that means the place you can hide the best and you've got the, the best shooting lanes and the best hearing place. So a hunting blind can be a good use in this kind of situation. Find a good area or you only have one good area, plop up your blind, you show up there opening morning and you're hoping to hear turkey signs. Now, like I said, that's probably you know not the most successful strategy, but it works every year and it works for a lot of people. And I wouldn't want to dissuade you away from that. If that's your best option or your only option, that can absolutely produce. And turkeys, they move the most, or you can hear them the most early morning, but they do move throughout the day. So even if you don't hear action in that first hour or two, that doesn't mean there won't be turkeys in your area as the day wears on. So that can be effective. Don't give up even if you don't hear something early on. Turkeys can move around throughout the day. Sometimes toms will travel for miles in a given day. So as, as things wear on, your chances uh, you know, are still there. So you've got the, the blind set which, you know, again, it's not the best strategy, but it may be the best strategy for you based on your situation. Then you've got what I call the scout and sit. That's number two. And that is basically what it sounds like. You scout properties, whatever areas you have to hunt, public land, private land, your background or your backyard, wherever you can go, and you're trying to find the best area of the prospects that you have. You're looking for sign, you're looking for birds, maybe you go out you know, a week or two before the season, listen in for gobbles, trying to figure out are there birds in that area, and then you make a decision strategically to go in on a morning and to sit down and spend the day hunting there. So your chances are on this case are a little better, you've confirmed that there's birds, bird sign, activity, something in that area within range of where you're going to be sitting. But basically, you're going in and you're going to sit for the day. You can use a blind for this. Um, again, you know, unless you're doing the scouting in advance, that can be tough. Sometimes, you know, you're, you're pulling all the pieces together and the last minute you decide where you're going to hunt. Blind's not really going to work there unless you use a stake blind, which you just stick in the ground in front of you on a few stakes. It comes up this high. You can hide behind it. Those are real portable, real easy, real fast, real quiet to set up and cheap. So not a bad option there. But this is a sitting technique. You're going to spend the day sitting in an area. Uh, you might get up and move, but your plan is basically you you pick the best spot you can pick and you're going to sit there. Not unlike deer hunting, although you do have the option to move some. Then you've got what we call running and gunning. And this is a favorite of many turkey hunters. Now, I should say that even though what I'm about to say might sound like it's the most effective strategy, um, it is not always. The, the scout and sit can absolutely be the single most effective strategy. And you can let strategy, you can let scouting, and you can let patience prevail. 
but running and gunning has its, uh, you know, has its has its luster because it's really active. And it is just what it sounds. You're covering ground. You're covering an old logging road, gas line road, trail through the woods, field edge, wherever you can move with relative speed and ease without making a lot of noise. You're covering ground and stopping every few hundred yards to see if you can call and strike up a conversation with a gobbler. You know, as you get close, a gobbler hears you. He gobbles, decides he's going to come in. And, you know, he didn't know a hen had just come into his area. And that's what you're trying to do. So this can be a really effective way to, to hunt turkeys. You know, if you're mobile, if you can move easily. Some people can't cover miles in a day. And for them, you know, the scout and sit or the, the blind sit are just going to be, you know, better because that's what they're able to do. Um, you know, maybe you've got an injury. Maybe you're out of shape. Maybe you've got some sort of disability or handicap. You can't cover a lot of ground. You can run and gun on an ATV. Now, I don't recommend it. ATVs are loud. They do have quiet ATVs, but even those are pretty loud. If you're going to use an ATV, I would recommend you uh, get into an area, get off the ATV, then walk a couple hundred yards, and then hunt there. And then come back to the ATV, get on, maybe drive a mile, then get off, walk a few hundred yards. You want to put some distance between you and the ATV. Distance both in yards and in time. So if there are birds in the area, they think, okay, the ATV is over there. Well, that noise is gone now. And then they hear a bird over here call later. Because in reality, ATV drives by. Hens are not going to be calling, you know, 30 seconds later. But in the time it takes you to walk a couple hundred yards, sit down, set up, have a drink, um, you know, maybe have a snack and then do a call you've got a better chance. So I don't recommend ATV use in general, but if you have to, or if that's, you know, that, that enables you to get in the areas, then that's the way I would do it. But running and gunning, you can do throughout the morning, or if you're able to hunt in the afternoon, you can do that in the afternoon as well. Uh, and often the later in the day and the later in the season it gets, if you do get a gobbler to respond, your chances of him coming in are pretty good. So, but you could go, you know, easily days without, without this panning out, without getting another gobbler to respond or come in. So I like running and gunning. I think it's a lot of fun. It might be my favorite way to hunt, but it's difficult for me to hunt that way where I hunt because I don't have a lot of places that you can cover that much ground, uh, you know, in a morning where turkeys are. So there's, you know, I've got to really drive a distance and then get into the mountains and drive places my car can't go. So I got to get a four wheel drive and then I have access to some hunting areas where I could cover some real ground. But if you've got areas near you, this can be a really fun way to do it. Although not necessarily more effective than the scout and sit. But it is more fun in the fact that you're constantly moving. You're covering ground. It's not boring. And then you've got the fourth kind, the fourth strategy for hurt turkey hunting, which is what I call active recon. Now this is maybe the most strategic it's the one that requires maybe the most experience and skill, um, but it may also be the one that is the most fun. And if you're good at it, it may be the one that's the most effective. So most new hunters aren't going to jump to this one because there's so many other skills that you need to build up and uh, you, know, you want to get some practice and develop on before you feel comfortable doing this. But if you want to try it, hey, the number one reason to go out in the woods is to have fun. So try whatever you want to try, do whatever you want to do, hunt the style that's going to be the most fun for you. Um, you know, I remember years ago, I wanted to learn how to play the electric guitar and everybody tried to talk me into playing the acoustic guitar. They're like, oh, you got to learn to play the acoustic first and not the electric. So eventually I caved, got the acoustic guitar. Eh, it was okay. Wasn't really what I wanted to do. It was kind of fun, but it wasn't the electric guitar. Eventually, I sort of lost my momentum and just gave up on the whole guitar thing altogether. And I look back and I think, man, was I stupid for not learning, just picking up the electric guitar first, what I really wanted to play and not, you know, just saying, hey, you know, appreciate the advice, but I'm going to do what I really want to do, what I've got the energy and motivation to do. I'm not going to let, you know, regular protocol stop me from having fun. And who knows what might have happened if I really enjoyed it. So, you know, I take that same lesson and apply that to how you hunt. Hunt the way that's going to be the most fun for you, not the way people tell you is the most traditional way to do it or the right order of events, you know, 
go out into the woods and have fun. So with that, active recon. This involves getting into the woods early, earlier than you would probably for any of the other three strategies. And your goal here is to find a listening post. A listening post is an area where you can hear from a great distance. Usually it's the top of a hill, mountain, a knob, um, or on the edge of you know, a ravine, or anywhere where you can hear from a distance and you have a little bit of elevation. So you want to get to this listening post well before you think any gobbler is going to wake up and call from the roost. Get there. Usually you're going to climb. You're going to hike. You're going to cover some ground. It's going to be some work. Uh, get there, sit back, relax, lean against a tree, catch your breath, you know, focus yourself, and then wait for things to start. And what you're listening for is gobblers at any distance all around you to start gobbling when they wake up in the morning. You need to be here well before the first rays of the sun ever crest the horizon. It's got to be pitch black because gobblers can start calling really early and you want to be there when you hear the first gobbles. So as one gobbles, more likely to start gobbling around you. And what you're listening for is, okay, where are they gobbling? How far are they? How do I get to that area? And then what you're doing is strategically deciding, okay, I heard one down that way, maybe four or 500 yards. I'm going to go for that one. I heard one down there this way, but that's on the other side of a stream, and I don't feel like wading a stream. I heard one maybe... I don't know, super far that way, you know, six, seven, eight hundred yards maybe. And yeah, you can hear a turkey gobble that far if you've got altitude and open air and they're on a tree in the morning. You can hear that far. Um, but you might say that's too far and I probably would too. So you pick, you know, the one turkey or the best prospect that you hear. And then your goal is to move in that direction Try to figure out where that bird wants to go when he flies down from the roost. Position yourself in what you think his, his course is going to be and then try and call him to you. Now, in some states, it's illegal to hunt by stalking birds. Uh, this is not that. This is a strategy that should be legal in every state, though I'm not a lawyer, so you know I'm not going on record telling you that. Check with your local laws. But the idea here is you're not trying to sneak up on a turkey and shoot him. You're listening for a turkey on the roost, trying to figure out where he's going to go when he flies down, get yourself in that general vicinity, hide, and then call him to you. You're hunting by calling the bird to you. You're not hunting by trying to sneak up on the bird and shoot him. And that really doesn't work. Um, it just is not an effective strategy. Not with a shotgun, not in the spring season. Um, and you're much more likely to sneak up on another hunter and shoot them, which is why you're not allowed to do it in some states, Pennsylvania included. But active recon is not that. You are trying to get in front of where that bird is going to go from your listening post, get there before he even flies down if you can, set up, and then call him to you. And this way you're able to capitalize on the sounds that you hear in a great space of, you know, great distances. And you're, you're, you're much more likely to get some action. Now, again, it takes a lot more skill and experience to do this. You got to be sneaky. You got to be quiet. You've got to be extra stealthy. You've got to have some intuition, which is going to be based on experience and research on where you think that bird's going to go. If you're not familiar with the area, it's going to be a lot more difficult to try to figure in your mind where the bird's going to go, where you can hide, how you can get there. But... Um, it can be a tremendous amount of fun. Again, if you have an area where you have the right kind of space, you've got the distance, you've got maybe some, some altitude, some hills you can use, active recon can be super fun and exciting way to do it. Um, but of course, it's not available to everybody. So you got the blind set, you've got the scouting set, you've got running and gunning, you've got active recon. Which ones do I recommend for new hunters? I would say the scouting set and then running and gunning. If you've got the, you know, whichever one you've got the opportunity to do or try both, I think those are going to be the most effective. Figure out where the birds are and then sit and wait for them. Call in frequently. Let patients win the day. Or if you've got ground you can cover, cover it. Be, be quiet. Be slow. Stop every few hundred yards. Look for a place you can set up. Call. And if you get a response, get your hide on real quick and then 
Call sparingly, see if you can get that bird to come in to you. So make sure you subscribe, make sure you comment, make sure you hit that thumbs up button and then check out the New Hunter's Guide podcast. Really appreciate you guys. God bless you. Till next time, go get them in the woods. And remember, the best way to hunt for you is the way that you think is going to be the most fun, the way that you are going to enjoy the most. Don't let any list of strategies, don't let any tradition, don't let anybody tell you differently. Get out in the woods, have some fun. The best way to learn how to do any of these strategies effectively is to practice, to try them, to get some experience, to learn for yourself, and then regroup and do them better. So till next time, have a good one.